Mr. Chavez. Thank you. Maybe because I'm an old guy, a child of the 60s, um, when we started doing these things in school, um, I, I take a perspective that I think it's always best to educate young people on, um, you know, their, their sexual interactions, romance, love, the whole, the whole aspect. It's, uh, but we also know that many parents have a very difficult time with doing that. I think that um, the way California has approached this and originally was very well thought out. And if you actually read the rules, you know, the law that we have, it's done in an age-appropriate way. It's discussed the ramifications. And there's a lot of clear guidance given when it's provided by uh, professionals, teachers, who are employed by the state. And in that case, there is no reason to uh, this issue of opting in. However, uh, all of us know that there are different institutions out there that if they're brought in, they're actually outside contractors coming in to do business for the school district. I think what this bill has done since it's so narrowly crafted to only deal with when the school districts contact outside to bring somebody in that this takes place. I think uh, the challenge is we're not looking at restricted information to the children. We're actually putting the onus more on the school districts to do their job. If they're going to do that, then they need to let parents know that a vendor, somebody from the outside, is coming in to provide this service. I would imagine of many school districts, when you see it with this law ever has a light of day that passes, that they would be more accountable to this, which I think would be a good thing. But I'm also with the previous three, two members that have spoken, I would be not part of anything that would restrict information to young uh, men and women because we know if we do, that's not a good situation. And so we need to make sure they have this. I think the laws are good. This is just for outside uh, vendors coming within the school district. Uh, I appreciate the uh, the maker of the bill to want to work with the rest of the members to go forward with this. If there's any concern about that, uh, as a father and a grandfather, I would like to make sure that whoever's talking to my grandchildren actually has the proper perspective and the maturity to deal with this. And so for that reason, I'll be supporting this bill and I'll uh, move approval of the bill. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, any other any other committee members wish to comment? Thank you, uh, Mr. Gallagher. I appreciate your passion on this issue. To me, you know, as I look at this, it seems like an incident happened at a high school that probably wasn't too appropriate. Okay, I'll concede that fact. But I don't know that that requires a blanket-wide state policy. And if you look at current law, it does it does state that the analysis uh, reflects that the the materials are to be made available for parent inspection. So that is current law. Uh, the name of the organization or affili affiliation of each speaker is to be shared as well. It is law. Now, if that didn't happen, there's a problem. Okay, and there's a problem with that. Oh, no, no, no. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate your passion too. But there's a problem with an administrator. There's a problem in a district. I don't know that necessarily there's a statewide problem. Uh, you know, you know, I'm a realist. I taught high school. I left there in December. Kids get pregnant. It's the most unfortunate thing I see at a high school level. Too many do. So, you know, for me, sticking with the existing policy works best. So that, that's where I stand. Uh, we do have a motion, and the motion is the motion is due pass to appropriations. And we have a second. Yes, Ms. So the secretary called the roll. O'Donnell? No. Did he get O'Donnell? to close? Did you get to close? Oh, I, I apologize, Mr. Gallagher. <laughs> um, 
I just ask for your I vote, and I am willing to work with the committee on amendments or on or if it's on reconsideration, uh, whatever is your pleasure. Uh, one issue on just one quick issue is on on the affiliate. The affiliation was stated, but there's nothing in current law that requires you to notify who the instructor actually is or their specific cons uh, credentials. So yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Chavez. Aye. Chavez. Aye. Kim. Kim not voting. McCarty. Santiago. Thurman. No. Thurman no. Weber. No. Weber no. So it has one to three. Is the, thing. the motion fails one to three and is on call. It is on call. Okay, it is on call. Mr. Correct. Chairman, is now the appropriate time to ask if I wanted to ask for reconsideration or? Uh, re reconsideration is granted. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Oh, there you are. Okay. <laughs> Ms. Campos, welcome. Uh, we are now on uh, file item number 13, AB 891, the file item number 13. Thank you, Mr. Chair um, and members of the committee. I present to you AB 891, a bill that would help close the school's achievement gap and increase opportunity for California's most underserved and marginalized youth. Let me start by accepting the clarifying and technical amendments as proposed by the committee. Studies have shown that removing the barriers to academic success has the power to level the playing field and enable disadvantaged students to achieve economic security and to thrive as adults. According to a 2014 report by the California Attorney General's Office, poverty, poverty, especially deep poverty, and youth who did not have access to transit is a significant cause of truancy. A survey of Oakland youth found that 61% of students reported that sometimes they used their lunch money or other money that they may have had to obtain a bus pass. And we know for low-income students that having access to school, a job, and after-school programs can be difficult if they do not have a pass. AB 891 provides the opportunity and it, uh, it, it provides a three-way uh, mechanism to get them there, guaranteeing free public transportation to schools for students with income below 185% of the federal poverty line, giving priority and free access to after-school activities for homeless and our very poor youth establishing several proactive initiatives aimed at increasing educational outcomes of low-income youth who reside in a CalWORKs family. I have um, several individuals here that can speak to this and give you a clear picture of what the life of a youth may encounter and the barriers that they face to their academic success. Michelle Stolparvensky, Children's Defense Fund California, proud co-sponsor because we know that education is one of the best pathways out of poverty and we need to make sure that our kids have the resources they need to attend and succeed in school. Um, I, we have prepared testimony, but the real reason why CDF is supporting this bill is because of what we've heard from children and parents and families. And we have some of them here today, so I want to um, give my time to them and they will introduce themselves. Hello, my name is Janetta Hall. I have a daughter who's seven years old. Um, we are currently homeless, and, and we're, uh, we do uh, have um, 
welfare right now. And um, as we as um, we tried to get an after school program, they gave us a ten dollar charge, um, which is we can't afford it being homeless and um, to get an after school program. And, and um, I just. I'm just here to give my testimony about AB 891 and that you consider just um, really look, making it that we, we can be on that list, be a, on top of the list because it's hard for us to get on the, we were on the waiting list and we've been on the wait list because they charge us $10 and we can't afford that right now. Thank you. Um, and just to, uh, Jessica Barflow with Western Center on Law and Poverty, also a co-sponsor of the bill, um, Janetta and I talked before the hearing, and Janetta talked about the hopes that she has for her daughter, that she'll succeed in school. She's an only, only child, um, and she likes to study with her friends. And she also told me that she wants her to be involved in sports and dancing and, and sees what the other kids are doing in the after school um, and would like that for Kayla, for her daughter. Um, Thank you for testifying. Um, we have some students to talk about the other part of the bill to be heard today uh, with regards to transportation to and from school so that they can receive their constitutionally uh, guaranteed education as Californians. Thank you. Um, good afternoon. Um, my name is Tanisha Dedard. I'm with the Justice Coalition, and I'm a, high school, um, a recent high school graduate um, and a youth organizer with the Youth Justice Coalition. I urge you guys to pass AB 891 to provide low-income and, no, and non-low-income students access to free transportation at, um, to and from school. I have a sister and a brother. That meant that my mom had to come up with at least $100 a month to buy a student metro passes. She couldn't choose transportation over housing or food, so usually I would have to walk to school. Whenever I was late to school, the police would be surrounding our campus giving out truancy tickets. Each truancy ticket cost $250, and if you unpaid it, it went up to $900. Of course, my family couldn't afford these fines, and I was afraid to tell my mom about it. And after a few times of getting tickets, the school police pulled me out of class in front of everyone. I was arrested and sent to juvenile hall for a month for truancy tickets. From the time I entered the grade at juvenile hall, I felt anxious and hopeless. I remember the sound and sight of the big bulky metal wire gate opening up and then shutting behind me. I took showers with staff watching from the beginning to the end, and there was no shower curtain, so I would see the male staff whenever they would come in anytime I was locked up. I felt completely unwanted and unnoticed. I started to feel tense when any of the guards would come close to my cell, paranoid that I had done something wrong, when in reality I had been by myself for the last 23 hours. It's by far the worst feeling I have ever experienced. From 8 or 9 p.m. to the next morning, 6 a.m., we're locked into a single-person cell that looks exactly like the box. Um, in other words, solitary confinement. It's also freezing. If, and if you're found with an extra blanket or a sweatshirt, you're accused of having contraband and you get punished. We had no books or writing materials, so our nights were endless. Just you, your thoughts, and the screams of crying young people in the cells next to you. The sheets and underwear were often stained with urine, blood, or feces, and people had to beg to use the restroom. Most of the time, you would get ignored and told to, um, and told to shut up. And we were sometimes forced to pee on the floor in the towel or onto your own sheet. Whenever I came, when I came out of juvenile hall, I, um, I wasn't allowed to go back to the regular high school I had got arrested from. Um, continuation schools have no access to classes needed to go to um, UC or Cal State. So not having transportation to school also impacted my chances to go to um, college. I think all young people deserve free transportation to and from school. Not having transportation is what led me to my incarceration. It cost LA County at least $120,000 a year to lock up a young person, but less than $300 gives free transportation. Even more important, without transportation, how can we finish school? How can we go to college or have a career? You, just give us, you can give us a little support now or face much higher costs in terms of unemployment, incarceration, homelessness, and other crises in the future. And like she said earlier, a lot of times when you are going to school and you do, your mom does give you the couple of dollars for the bus, you're often choosing lunch or a ride on the bus. Um, thank you again. I urge you guys to pass this bill. 
Hello everybody, my name is Juan Peña and I'm a youth organizer with the Youth Justice Coalition. And there was this one day that I was going from to my school and I had to take the train. It was more of a, for me, it was really a hard thing to experience in, in my life because on my way to school, I, when I was taking the train, when I boarded the train, this officer at the train stop, he asked me for my bus pass and it was valid. And he still had a, he still took me off the train. He didn't even let me get on the train. He he put me to the side and took out, empty out my backpack and stuff in front of me, in front of other people. And to me, that was, I was looking like I, I did something wrong. I looked like a criminal or something. And throughout the whole ride, that happened to me seven times. So every other stop, the bus, the train went. There was an officer waiting for me to take me off the train and take and empty out my pockets and go into my pockets, go into my backpack, into my, to my belongings, and still, and do, and still like, checking my bus pass, and my bus pass was valid. You know, it was valid for the whole month. This bill would, would help a lot of young people, like myself, and even people throughout the whole California with um, negative impacts or negative contact with the law enforcement as well. Thank you for your, your time. Thank you. Uh, any other witnesses in support? Sorry. Youth Justice Coalition, we're proud to be co-sponsors on this bill. And 10,000 young people a year experience similar um, incidents of getting ticketed. That's the number one ticketing for L.A. County youth. So we really urge your support of this bill. Thank you. Thank you. For the re remaining in support, could you please just state your name, position uh, on the bill? 